Hello everybody, this is Vibhor here. Welcome back to my channel. Apple has unveiled its new M1 chip and has given out the two new laptops, the brand new MacBook Pro and the brand new MacBook Air. Now many of you have been asking me questions, which is the perfect Mac for us to purchase at this time? Based on that both the Macs have got the same M1 chip, is it worth purchasing just MacBook Air and just forget about MacBook Pro? Let's cover all these questions in this video. Friends, my name is Vibhor. I'm an accountant and a business analyst based in Melbourne. I make videos about Apple, Apple products and technology in general. If you like these topics, please do consider subscribing to my channel. So let's begin with the similarities that we have in MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. So first and foremost, guys, both these systems come with the M1 chip integrated in them. So let's talk about the M1 chip in general. What M1 chip is? Well, the M1 chip is the latest five nanometer chip which has been brought out by Apple recently. This is an integrated chip which has got CPU, GPU, the RAM, a unified memory. So everything right in one chip. So unlike the Intel times where all these things were different components on the logic board, everything has been compacted and put into one system which gives it more power efficiency and more overall boost in the power. Now this has got an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU. So the four cores in the CPU are more power efficient and the four are more energy efficient. So when you are doing general, your day to day tasks, watching movies and stuff like that. So the four cores which are energy efficient will be used by the system. And if you are using say Final Cut Pro or you are editing your uh, photo photos in Photoshop, your high efficiency cores are going to be used at that time. It also has an eight core GPU. What that means is that now your MacBook Air also has that power to play those resource hungry games on the system. And you can also do that 4K video editing right out of your MacBook Air systems. On top of that, the M1 chip comes with a 16 core neural engine. So those video tone adjustments and your photo correction adjustments for which uses your machine learning in the backend, that's gonna be instantaneously and super fast. And with the latest Mac OS update of Big Sur, your entire library of the iOS and iPad OS applications can be used on your new laptops, which come with the M1 chip. Now that is where all the similarities in the two systems end. So now let's talk about the two laptops in general, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. What are the dissimilarities between the two and why you should choose one over the other? So starting with MacBook Air, it comes with the same unibody design, the aluminum body design, which we are used to since the start of the era. And again, it has got the M1 chip. So you can do the 4K video editing right on your MacBook Air now. People owning MacBook Air, they know that Editing videos on MacBook Air is such a pain. Uh, your 4K video editing, that would run crisp because of the M1 processor this time on MacBook Air. Now, if we talk about the data which Apple gave, uh, 5.3 times faster is the rendering speed that Final Cut Pro is gonna have over the previous generation of MacBook Air itself. It's gonna be three times faster game performance and nine times faster machine learning this time on the MacBook Air. So these are really incredible numbers. I have already ordered the MacBook Air. Uh, once I receive them, we are going to test them right over here in our lab and see how accurate these numbers are. Now, another thing to consider over here is that the MacBook Air does not have any fans. So the thermal efficiency of the cores in the M1 chip are so good and the, uh, the thrusting of the fan is not required to cool the MacBook. So the MacBook Air is much cooler than the predecessor because the Intel processors take too much heat. They generate too much heat. The M1 chip is, does not generate that much heat. So they thought that the MacBook Air does not require a cooling fan. On the contrary, the MacBook Pro does have a cooling fan. Why it has it, we'll get to that in a moment. Now the screen on the MacBook Air is super efficient. It is It has got the P3 gamut color. So some time ago, Apple moved away from the RGB in general and they are onto the P3 colors. That gives 25% more color saturation and better brightness and contrast ratios on their screens that is why the screen looks so beautiful so we have that beautiful screen on the macbook air as well and that's the same screen on macbook pro as well now it comes with 2 gb of ssd which is twice as fast as the previous generation the camera on the macbook air is anyways the same as the previous one but the clarity on camera is way way better because of the new machine learning the machine learning uh, calculates that shadows and brightness and the details of the contrast so well and it creates the video and photos which are so excellent uh, now how that looks again these are all the numbers that we have right now which Apple has given us 
how that actually looks like we're gonna know once we have those systems with us in our hands now the microphone on this is the three array microphone which is uh, not exceptionally super good but which is nice your day-to-day -day, uh, video chat your talking your conferences calls uh, that all would be uh, you know crisp and sharp and the audio is going to be fine now this time macbook air also comes with the touch id it comes with the uh, wi-fi 6 protocol and it comes with the thunderbolt usb uh, four uh, ports on the laptop so that means you can hook on the 6k display directly onto your macbook air as well now if you talk about the battery the macbook air's battery is six hours more than its predecessor you so you can get a battery life of approximately roughly 18 hours on the macbook air which is superb so that was everything about macbook air if you talk about macbook pro this time uh, the processor is the same it's the same m1 processor as macbook air so pretty much the processor cores efficiency everything is the same now what the difference over here is that for thermal efficiency in macbook pro they have put in the fan now what that fan does is when the super high-end processes you have to run say you are editing multiple streams of 4k video or you're going into that 3d modeling on your macbook system uh, at that time the fans are gonna just start and keep your processor cool what that means is your overall performance for macbook pro is gonna be more than macbook air and that is what the apple numbers also state so as per apple it's gonna be roughly around six times faster with regards to final cut pro performance and roughly three times faster for the game performance and 11 times faster with regard to the machine learning performance with the neural engine so these numbers are definitely more than uh, what we saw on the macbook air what we expect is this is because of the fan that they have put in the macbook pro otherwise the processor is same when it's going to be really hot and you are into all those processes this fan is going to kick in and that is going to uh, keep your processor cool and more energy efficient again this also shows on the battery numbers uh, because the processor is going to be more cooler it's going to be more energy efficient it does not have to jump to the higher uh, power consumption cores the battery backup on macbook pro is going to be 20 hours which is double what we were getting earlier so earlier on the previous generation macbook pro with intel processes we were getting a 10 hours of battery backup this time we are getting a 20 hour of battery backup so for all those long journey flights that i go to i can just pick up my macbook pro have one charge and then uh, my entire journey i can finish off my entire projects on just one flight also the brightness on macbook pro screen is going to be a little bit more it's a 500 nits on macbook pro on macbook air it's going to be 400 nits that again depends if you're gonna put your screen to the maximum brightness i generally have it automatically on the on the auto brightness level so it never touches 400 nits anyways the camera on macbook pro and macbook air is anyways the same so there's going to be no change in, in with that with that regards now when it comes to microphone the macbook pro has got the studio level professional microphone system it is the same microphone system which i've got on my 16 inches macbook pro i do my screencast screen recordings directly on my macbook pro it's sometimes not even attach an external microphone because the microphone on this system is really nice this is the same microphone which they are giving in the macbook pro the newer version also in macbook pro you get the touch bar so uh so your shortcuts and everything can be on the touch bar i use it while doing the final cut pro editing uh, but it's not a deal breaker for me i don't think it's a deal breaker for majority of people but it definitely looks beautiful and if you are used to using the macbook pros touch bars then definitely uh, you are gonna get that in the new macbook pros macbook air does not have it and with regards to connectivity connectivity is also the same macbook air or macbook pro you'll get the same wi-fi 6 you'll get the same usb 4 thunderbolt port so you can connect up to 6k hd display irrespective of which model of macbook you purchase now the big question what should you take so i've told you everything about the m1 i've told you everything about macbook air macbook pro now if you talk about who should purchase which kind of system i would suggest for majority of people macbook air would be uh, you know the best buy best purchase if you are not upgrading anything so the base model of macbook air comes with 8 gigs of ram uh, 8 core cpu and a 7 core gpu so one core is missing over there whereas the macbook pro base model comes with an 8 gigs of uh, ram 8 core cpu and an 8 core gpu for majority of people like one core would really not matter a lot and there is a uh, 
drastic uh, price difference between MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. So if uh, it does not really matter to you about that core, then that extra core, I would say MacBook Air is a perfect buy. Also, MacBook Air gives you that mobility uh, to just pick it up, go anywhere, and you can even sit on couch, keep it on your lap, uh, even be in the bed and work on the bed because it does not have that fan which which needs that thrusting that power so uh, you can just place it anywhere it's gonna remain cool and uh, you can have good performance wherever you carry and, and it's easier to carry overall like more for mobility factor macbook air is what i recommend now if you are using 4k video editing with multiple layers of 4k edits or you are into 3d modeling vectors and rendering then i would suggest going for macbook pro because that extra uh, you know fan support on the macbook pro will keep your processor even more cool and then uh, your extra thirst when that comes when that four high efficiency cores kick in and your processor really needs that thirst of power at that time macbook pro's fan is going to be handy even the apple's numbers tell us that actually even if there are m1 and m1 chip in both the models the performance of macbook pro is generally higher than macbook air but as I said, like for majority of people like you and me, it really does not matter. Like MacBook Air would be more than enough. Second thing is like if you are used to like, as I said, for the uh, touch bar, that touch bar will come only in MacBook Pro. And if you want that studio quality microphone and want to use that right, you know, recording on your uh, laptop itself, uh, your mic, you do not want to connect your external microphone, then I would suggest like MacBook Pro has got really, really good mics. So in conclusion, if you are happy with seven cores of GPU, I would suggest going for MacBook Air. It gives you maximum, uh, you know, mobility and you can carry it anywhere. If you want that extra core and you want to upgrade your MacBook Air to an eight core GPU, the price generally comes to where macbook pro price is anyways like it's, it's not much of a difference then then just go for macbook pro you'll get that extra efficiency and extra power altogether but if i would say your mobility is your main concern you want that sleek feel of macbook here then there's uh, no going away from macbook here so that's all i can say like pretty much the two systems are very much identical apart from the design apart from the weight apart from the mobility factor rest everything on the two system is more or less okay there is a subtle difference on speed uh, when it comes to macbook pro but for most of us you will not find that difference so that's all for this video guys if you like it give it a thumbs up if you like content like this Please subscribe to my channel, hit that red button. I will see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.